All right, Black Goose TV family. You know we got to talk about it. Eddie Hearn recently came out on an interview. Uh, it's on Boxing Social's YouTube channel. Go and subscribe to that. I'm only going to show about a minute and a half of this interview, of course, to respect to the other uh, YouTube's channel. Uh, I never want to ever be uh, copyrighted for taking any type of content. I'm just showing this little snippet. Talk about it a little bit. So if any of you guys missed that, uh, y'all can see it. Talk about it yourself and actually go to the real YouTube channel you heard and watch the whole interview. It's a good interview. Eddie Hearn always got something good to say. You know what I'm saying? So... Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. It's been talked about so much in the past month, month and a half. It started off with Dillian White calling out Fury, saying, let's fight. Fury responded to Dillian White saying, I ain't fighting for no bum belt. Give me the real belt. I'll do it. Dillian White saying he's scared. Fury saying that basically he'll run him over. He'll dominate him and knock him out. Dillian White saying that's not going to happen. Finally, full head steam forward bop, 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 all the way to today um and finally we have eddie hearn saying tyson fury has accepted the fight now i did a video on this i think last week showing an article uh an article of eddie hearn saying these exact same words to ifl the thing that's funny to me is tyson fury hasn't said anything right that same article that i talked about when we were referring to tyson fury saying he accepted the fight these are words from eddie hearn that same article also said they don't see it happening. I was in disagreement with that because I do believe Tyson Fury will take the fight, but I do find it very interesting that we have not heard anything from Tyson Fury regarding fighting White other than the fact uh, about maybe like a month ago, maybe a little bit less, him saying that he'll basically destroy uh, Dillian White, gotta be for the diamond belt. Well, it is for the diamond belt, excuse me. So now it's just on Fury to say whether or not him confirming it is real. So. Here's Eddie Hearn saying his piece on the whole Tyson Fury, Dillian White um, uh, fight situation. Unification fight first to make the undisputed champion. But in terms of Tyson Fury as well, where does he fit into the plans? Is that, would, you rather, would you take that one ahead of John Tate if he was offered? The, 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 the one million percent focus is being undisputed champion. Uh, Fury is a great fight for Joshua and one he wants as well. Um, if we can't get Wilder, definitely look at Fury. Fury's got to fight Dillian White next after Tom Schwartz. Is that official? Yeah, he's been ordered to. I mean, he's been ordered to and he's accepted it, you know. So we'll start negotiations after their fights and hopefully we get that done. Joshua, well, Joshua against Fury is a must, you know, whether it's next, whether it's next summer. And if we can't get uh, Wilder, we'd love the Fury fight as well. But the only fight that... So, that was really all Eddie Hearn said about that situation. <laughs> that was literally like 30 seconds. You can see it's a 13 minute interview. That was literally 30 seconds. And he just said it quick. Yeah, Tyson Fury, he accepted it. This is mandatory. So, unless he backs out. So he's basically putting Tyson Fury in a situation where if Tyson Fury does end up saying he doesn't want the fight, most people are gonna look at him saying, well, you're ducking. And this is one thing that Eddie Hearn is very good at doing as a promoter, if you haven't noticed. He's very good at, he's very good at, at creating a narrative. And he's very good at changing the narrative because he's one of the few promoters that, like I said, he's a Dana White of boxing, but yet he's not over all boxing entities. What I mean by that, he's not over PBC, he's not over ESPN, right? He, oh, he He's in charge of Matchroom, right? The Zone signed him, right? But he does a very good job because he is constantly putting himself out there of being able to create a narrative because you're seeing what we see as boxing fans we see a promoter we don't see very many pro well let, let me say this we do see promoters but we don't see very many promoters that have the limelight or the spotlight that eddie hearn does people click on eddie hearn interviews nobody there's no other person people click on the interviews al Heyman doesn't even do interviews and he's not even a he's, he's not even the same position as eddie hearn right but it, it, what i'm trying to get at is eddie hearn does a very good job at you know changing the perspective, changing the narrative, creating the narrative when it comes to his fighters. As you can see when it become, uh, when it comes to the Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder negotiations, as you saw when it, came, when it came to the Luis Ortiz and the Anthony Joshua negotiations. He's very good at making sure that people, at the very least, believe that none of his fighters are ever ducking. It's always other fighters, it's always other fighters. I'm not saying that this is true or not. I'm not saying that, but all we need to understand is that if we are listening to Eddie Hearn, you have to understand there's three sides to every story. His side, the other side, and the truth. So you can only take 
what Eddie Hearn says is what maybe like 30 40 percent of the truth because there's another side coming from it and that's just reality everybody Eddie Hearn is going to say what he needs to say to make himself his brand his fighters look the best and I feel like people get lost in that sauce because they're like, oh, I haven't seen very many promoters come out and talk so openly about money. I haven't seen very many uh, promoters come out, and talk so openly about negotiations, talk about how this is signed and that's signed. So obviously Eddie Hearn's telling the truth. No, he's just one of the first to really do it. And really not the first. Dana White was the first, but he's kind of following the blueprint. So you got to understand because he has this type of um, attention. Whoever is associated with him, he can create that narrative because now you have a guy like Eddie Hearn saying, oh, Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury, they won't accept the fight, but my guy has. And then when you go over to the other side, you have Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury saying, well, we accepted the fight. We want the fight. Um, uh, but I don't know what's going on, on his side. People are not going to believe the fighter over the promoter. That's just how it's looked at right now. If you have your promoter saying, well, we put the money out there, we put the negotiation out there, and he ain't saying, and he don't want it, he ducked. People are going to be like, well, obviously he ducked. Because people are saying like, well, if the fighter's coming out, and he's basically, he has a rebuttal for the promoter, I'm going to believe the promoter, because the promoter's the one who's handling all the figures, all the numbers. Like, Anthony Joshua speaks, he says his piece, but he never really, like, now, this year, and maybe a little bit of last, is when you really started hearing Anthony Joshua really speak on these taboo, um fantasy fights that we've been wanting to see in the heavyweight division he's never really been out there like that he'd say his piece say a little here, here a little there but now he's really 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 out there before it was all eddie hearn eddie hearn eddie hearn and i think that was part of the plan eddie hearn i'm going to create this narrative and then i'll let you come out right but either way it goes this is all my opinion remember that none of this is fact i just thought it was very interesting that not only did eddie hearn say so little on a potentially very big fight that obviously he would love to have because as of right now white is associated with eddie hearn but he basically put all the pressure on Tyson Fury. He said, look, we signed it. That, uh, that's his mandatory. It's on him. Let's move on. Let's not talk about this anymore. And so now everyone's going to be waiting in the shadows to see if Tyson Fury actually follows his word and fights white. But at the same time, we don't even really know if that's his word. We don't know if he signed it. We don't know if he agreed it. Maybe only the only thing that happened was he was ordered to fight white. We don't know that. But... As Eddie Hearn is always good at doing, he creates a narrative for his fighter. He makes his fighter the good guy. And now Tyson Fury, depending on how he responds, will it be the bad guy or the, oh, God dang it. Why don't you tell us earlier you, you, you said okay to the fight? We, wanna, we, we wanted to know this beforehand. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's really not a, it's a win-win situation for Eddie Hearn and his team. And it's a lose-lose situation for Tyson Fury. That's basically what he's setting up, in my opinion. If y'all agree, I mean, I'm sorry. If y'all disagree with me, go ahead and comment below. If y'all agree with me, why don't y'all go ahead and subscribe? You heard me? Either one, I'm appreciating the love. Black Goose TV all day. Look, it's late, 1034. I don't care. I'm about to get on my NBA Live right now, so check out for that uh, stream. Yo, get the money. Oh, oh, me, your friend.